Okay, I hope everyone is ready for the next panel. So on the behalf of RICS, a National Association of Allers in Serbia, I'm, I would like to welcome you all to this panel that comes up after the lunch, and I know that you're all guys full with stomach, so it's gonna be a hard time for you to listen to us, but still, from our perspective, it should be the most interesting valuation topic. As I see here, we do have many valuers, we do have bankers and all other real estate professionals, so, uh, I'm glad to see you all here, and today we are going to talk about expanding the role of property valuers. We will, be, we will give our best effort to give you some hints and to tell you what is our perspective and what is going on, on on our market, what is our role today, and what is going to be in the future, and where do we see each other uh, in a few or several years. Okay, so I'll go back in the history, 151 year ago, uh, RICS was made actually by 49 professional surveyors and today, after that period, we are standing here sitting in front of you guys and we are following their path and their route, so that is actually great for us. Um, we all know on these days during the investing period, we do have three pillars of investment. Uh, and a way of investing. So the first one, or the one that I will mention the first would be investing in gold. The second one would be investing in bonds, stocks, or let's say securities. And the third one that is most important and most interesting for us is real estates. So we do see now that we are very important. Actually, the real estate is important in the every market on the whole world because as you are familiar that real estate is everyone's wish actually. Everyone once time in a period in a life should buy an, uh, an apartment. Either is that for living, either is that for chilling, for uh, renting, or either is that a legal entity is buying or maybe an investment fund or just buying for an investment. So we do know that real estates are called safe investments because of the yields and because of the, let us, let's I say, uh, risk that is included in that because you all know the relationship, the higher is the risk, the bigger is the profit and that comes up that it's all up the, about the information that people do have at that period while they are thinking to in invest. So now I'm going to share you, our, actually we all are going to share you our secrets and give you some hints, but please let it stay between us and don't tell anyone, okay? So uh, you all do know me, but you don't know, maybe don't know my panelists. The first of them would be the professor, PhD in finance, and that's our great colleague that is used to ask questions, everyone. And today he is going to ask our questions. <laughs> so please, um, Mr. Karamujic, tell us uh, how that works in, uh, in, in Bosnia and what are the, let's say, key challenges that valors need to take during the evaluation process and uh, how do you see your role there and what should be the role of the valor in Bosnia? Thank you, Uroš, and greetings to everybody. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel more comfortable asking questions than answering, but one has to do what one has to do. A uh, very <clears throat> broad topic. Uh, with respect to the future of the industry, uh, I have some reasonable international experience as well, lived in different countries. Most of the time in Australia, I spent there 20 years and re returned back to the region seven years ago. Hence, I can say that I have a modest knowledge about the practices internationally. Uh, and in between those, those, those terms traveled, traveled intensely uh, through my work as, a, as, a, as an academic, but also professionally as a consultant. I've been bored for a number of years. Uh, now, the major, the major condition for the, for the uh, for the benefit, for the improvement of the profession <coughs> is definitely uh, continued professionalization. 
When we say that, what do I mean by that? We have two, we have two sides uh, of that problem. The first one is professional associations and the certification, something that we are doing here through, either through RICS or through, through TEGOVA, through REV. That's crucial because we have to standardize our professional approach. The other one is leg legislative requirements, meaning in the countries that we live. For example, Serbia, as we all know, has a, has a legislation, which is excellent. Uh, different countries have different arrangements. <coughs> I know in Montenegro there is a draft legislation or something similar that hasn't been put in place completely for whatever reasons. Uh, Croatia has a separate arrangement, Bosnia separate, Macedonia and whatever. In Bosnia, I'll tell you a few, few sentences about Bosnian experience. In Bosnia, we don't have a, a statewide legislation per se. What do I mean per se? I mean overarching legislation that is controlled by the government and that the, the licensing that is controlled by the government. There are pros and cons of that. Pros is that it's regulated, meaning people know what to expect. Cons uh, are that it can be badly managed, that people that don't know much, as much as we do about the profession, enter the field of the profession and started making an impact. Uh, very political statement from my side, but you can interpret it in many different ways. International experiences are that licensing is typically done outside the regime of the government. RIX is that example. TEGOA, REV are that example. Meaning, those professional associations are typically looking for de facto recognition, not de jure recognition. Simply, they don't want to be managed and influenced by the government departments and administration that may or may not be uh, well equipped to do so. In Bosnia, we don't have that de facto arrangement. As of recently, we got something different, which, which may be even better solution. MMF has been pushing in Bosnia for the mortgage valuation instruction for the financial system for the last year, year and a half. They came to at least a dozen of visits. And finally, about two months ago, they issued uh, the draft of mortgage valuation instruction through federal banking agency. The banking agency is Prudential Authority of Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's not Prudential, uh, things are not run by the central reserve banks in Bosnia, but by the federal agency, banking federal agency. That has a legislative strength. We call it bylaw meaning you have proper normal laws issued by the parliament and bylaws issued by the agencies, but has the same legal weight behind itself. And I'm very happy to announce that that mortgage valuation instruction has been, uh, has been drafted uh, in a very good manner. As a matter of fact, accepting in particular REV license as a valid, uh, RICS's license as well, but it's indirectly st stipulated and everything else is related to the international standard, in particular to EVS. Uh, meaning people, it's going to become effective 1st of July next year. People that want to practice valuation, they will have to be certified by REV or similar. REV is, is preferred. Uh, uh, they will have to, to, to work in accordance to EVS standard. Uh, they must have significant sizable experience to work in a particular field, etc. They, they must have CPDs. As a matter of fact, in effect, uh, requirements of EVS are translated into that valuation instruction. And uh, yeah, I hope it will not be changed or amended in a significant matter before it becomes due in 1st of July. Now, with respect to the other fields, other fields outside the financial systems are not directly covered by this instruction. Uh, nevertheless, because there is nothing else with respect to the other fields, uh, I suppose that instruction will be taken as a given being uh, issued by the government, official government agency. Now, uh, 
that's the second side, meaning legislative side is the one side, and I just stipulated that. Second one is the international professionalization, that is membership of international professional bodies, such as REV or RICS, which is also important. Now, when we have those two sides, we have all preconditions for the strengthening of the industry. I will purposely not talk about what has been happening thus far with respect to the profession, and meaning pretty much every, anybody could have been involved in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way, not everybody, but sort of a, a wide spectrum of people were involved in, in, in the profession of valuation. Now, I hope that practice will, will regionally stop. In Bosnia, we, I hope that this, this, this legislation will help in that effect. And after that, I'm sure that the, the future of the professional will be, will be brighter by the day. Why? Mostly the demand for the, for the valuation services were coming from the banking sector. I know from my uh, Australian experience that is not the case. Government bodies, uh, accounting agencies, uh, departments of finance, de taxation departments, etc., 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 created a bulk of demand for the, for the valuation profession. And I'm sure after we after we go through these early stages of development process, that will be the case in our region. The most money valuers in Australia make in court litigation cases. They don't have those court witnesses as such, but both, both sides choose their experts, consultants, and meaning that's the best pay. Obviously, because of the exposure, financial as well as criminal, People involved in litigations are exceptionally keen to have the best representation possible. <laughs> Hence, people make the most money there. I know from talking from my colleagues as a court experts, uh, those, those jobs give them the least money <laughs> because of those fees and whatever else. But again, that's the, that's the habitual situation that's been happening in this region for some time. But with this professionalization, as I like to say it, on both sides, uh, I'm sure that will, that will change. I will give you another example. Uh, for example, Department of Finance, <coughs> with respect to the, to the stamp duties or, say, or, or, sales, or sales tax, the legislation strictly s stipulates in Bosnia 5% of the, of the market value of the property. But nobody defines the market value. Within the Department of Finance, they have a commission or a small team that goes there and they make the value. Meaning, we have a, we have a real problem because the, the legislation is okay, but the applicability, application of that legislation is not okay. The profession didn't have a strength to impose itself on, 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 on the, the departments, on, on, on the application of the legislation because it was not professional enough. Now, I'm, I, I sincerely hope that sort of, uh, that in, in a foreseeable future, uh, we are on the path of that changing in a positive manner, and uh, I'm quite confident, confident that sort of our profession has a bright future and that it will enable us uh, to make much more money than we do these days. Thank you very much. Thank you. And what <laughs> okay, what do we do in Serbia for the valors? I will give you, like, let me say, an estimated value and numbers, for example. Uh, I did my homework and research uh, on that. How many valuations do we have in Serbia in 2018? Can you imagine what is the number? 40,000 valuations. And I need to tell you something, because you're always saying about the banks and the banks. The banks are, are around 40% up to 50%. It's more close to 40% that are done for the banks. Where are where else do we work for? We do work for bankruptcy trustee. We do work for, um, like, for a public executor. And the one most important thing, thing we do for, like, uh, investment consultants doing valuations for that purpose. And as well, we do for the finance reporting. Finance reporting is the great market as well as the bank market. And on. These days, we, are, we all do know that they are changing, like, let us say, in, in, 
they're changing the laws and pretty soon we will do have an opportunity to do even much more work for finance markets. As well, when we are talking about the fees that we are getting from the, our users of valuations, you do need to know that valuations for banks are uh, around like 150 to 180 for a valuation in euros. And for a bankruptcy trustee doing evaluations around 500 to 1,000, uh, doing for a public executor, there is around 300 to 500 euros. And for investment services, it's all up to the deal that you guys are working. As well, you all do know before the valuation process, we were all court experts. Actually, some of us are still a court experts, but three years ago, we haven't had evaluation law at all. And you all are familiar that uh, prices that we are getting for court experts are around, uh, let's just see, 300 and even more. So uh, my next uh, colleague, a dear friend and a great banking professional, comes up from the banks. And we all do like bankers. Yeah, because um, he is a valor and he is a banking professional. And I would like to ask him um, about the main risks that are currently play a role in the valuation process and how, from the banking value perspective, how do you assess a long-term risks? So, Mr. Runjavac, Sergeant, will help us out with that. Uh, hello. Uh, you can hear me? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Rashwell. Uh, you did your you did your homework well. I didn't. I wasn't aware of such uh, amount of uh, and volume of uh, valuations. Uh, I would only ask if if those were uh, only uh, residential valuations or uh, valuations in, in total. Yeah, that's so th that's that's uh, 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 from one perspective can be a huge amount of uh, 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 volume, a huge amount of uh, number of valuations. From another perspective, uh, it's nothing. Uh, uh, um, for what I can say from my perspective is uh, four years ago I was as well as you in a real estate valuation business as its core uh, business, and now I'm playing for the for the. Uh, Another team, I changed the gear and I'm on a creditor a lender side. And that's also for me a small example of how the role of value has evolved through time here in Serbia as well. So 10, uh, 12 years ago, I don't know who could imagine that uh, real estate values could, should, and will be uh, um, involved and engaged uh, 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 to, to work for a bank. And uh, what greets me especially is it's uh, because of the necessity. If it was because that certain things uh, were done in the, the, the manner that caused everything uh, in 2008, and, and uh, in particular with, with uh, some respo responsibility with the valuers, and the regulators responded partly uh, uh, by, okay, uh, engaging the valuators in uh, the banks, and I, uh, my personal opinion is that it can benefit for all. Now the valuers has a good opponent and good uh, cooperation with banks in a day-to-day -day basis, and has someone, somebody who can uh, speak their language and who can um, uh, discuss every, every issue daily or whatever it means. Uh, so it was, it was a huge step forward. Then we had this uh, real estate valuation law empowered here in Serbia two years ago, and I see it also as a huge milestone for uh, not only Serbia but the region as an example for the Serbia as as example for a region, and it's just the beginning of something that it's future that it's something maybe uh, vague maybe something. Uh, not uh, not as clear as as it might seem. Um, you mentioned that amount of of of, of uh, valuations uh, uh, per year here in Serbia. Um, you know that uh, having a bank as an entity with a huge amount of valuations 
uh, per year it represents really a, a challenge uh, how to conduct all the risk management that are related to collaterals. Um, so the banks, yes, they don't they don't like uh, 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 they don't like to um, expand their um, uh, organizations and uh, they they don't like to to in, in, involve in um, in other other ways. But they had to, and now the, the majority of banks here in Serbia, for example, have uh, real estate collateral. Uh, or whatever department uh, dealing with uh, dealing with valuations, and it can be really challenging to to analyze, to monitor, to 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 check all the valuations that is coming on a daily basis from behalf of uh, all the valuers. So banking throughout the world, and we are here only a, 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 a small drop in in a. In, in a sea, uh, 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 are seeking how to find a solution. You mentioned 40,000 uh, valuations per year for Serbia. Uh, that's maybe one one bank in Germany or or, or whatever. So uh, they, they are really uh, 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 somebody can call it pushing the the practice uh, to to find a solution. But uh, uh, really, uh, the solution needs to be. Uh, uh, made how to how to make some progress and how to uh, make this this prog process and progress uh, as well. Uh, banking's uh, banks are evolving as well. So one uh, one of the panelists mentioned um, fintechs and and and, and uh, other other uh, uh, companies that are challenging banks worldwide. So uh, you you can imagine how uh, timeline has become one of the crucial uh, uh, things when, when dealing with, with clients. So it's, it's not even I have the lowest interest or I have uh, 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 the best terms, but uh, sometimes and, and it, it narrows down in, in, which, in what amount of days a work can be done. Um, so in, in regard, for example, just uh, a mortgage uh, value evaluations that they are conducting on the market, uh, when you have all the process that a client needs to go through in acquiring a loan, can you imagine how it sounds for the for the client when you s say to him, "Okay, now you have to wait three, five days for evaluation report," and then it's just one one piece of paper that completes all the documentation? So banks are really keen to find a, a way how to uh, find a, 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 a faster way of dealing with with daily business. Um, and I'm glad that it's going uh, as as much as possible in line with the practice and the representative of, pra of practitioners. RICS and Tegova are working closely with uh, European banking authorities in providing their set of views on how how the the, the evaluation process uh, can be uh, uh, optimized. What are the risks? What are the dangers? Uh, but the key, the key uh, 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 information is uh, that something will happen and something will change. RICS as well uh, uh, notice in their every report embrace technology. Technology is coming and it's coming fast, even faster than we can um, think. Uh, uh, um, what are the, the 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 pros and what are the cons of uh, this technology and? Um, uh, data and AI and virtual reality, 3D printings and whatever is disrupting real estate and valuation industry, it some, somehow all needs to come together. Uh, in this case, we are facing fast ch changes, that's, that's a fact, and in these circumstances, uh, regulators lack back uh, 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 in, in, in uh, keeping track of all the changes. Uh, we have blockchain uh, uh, throughout the world now that is that is being used and is going to be used once in Serbia as well. So it's only up to all the parties involved in Serbia whether they will be prepared or not. Uh, changes in valuation reports will be uh, uh, done as well. So uh, even now you have in some countries um, 3D valuation reports, interactive valuation reports, uh, so valuation reports are slowly becoming a, not just a service, not just a piece of paper. It's slowly becoming a opinion. It's slowly becoming a uh, uh, 
something that the reader, the, the user of, of the valuation uh, can understand and, and have some implications even for the future. So uh, the other thing, so as I mentioned, is uh, the first thing is uh, the regulators that needs to regulate all this uh, uh, huge amount of, of uh, uh, work that, that needs to be done. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the, that's, there is that data quality that is uh, on on a, on a high level of importance. Uh, in Serbia, we now do have really a, a, a huge step forward in terms of uh, transparency, in terms of help uh, tools that can help uh, to develop other things as well. But the other things, and we can talk on the, on the whole another panel, is what is the quality of the, that data that we are now uh, having uh, in, in Serbia. But every step is important. Every every effort is. Uh, great, and I hope that uh, uh, that here in region, as as region, that we will keep track with all the changes that are uh, uh, going throughout the world. Uh, so, in uh, from the banking perspective, is just uh, uh, being as 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 optimized as possible, the process as transparent as possible, objective objective as possible. Uh, we really, from banking perspective, really have a feeling of a uh, great uh, 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 change in valuation reports from uh, the, the, the law uh, in Serbia. So that's really great thing. And now the work's begun. So uh, I only uh, think that in in, in future, uh, uh, with continuous professional uh, upgrade, with with uh, challenges that are ahead of us, uh, that uh, we we should and we will keep track with the future uh, changes. So that's from the banking perspective. I I, I hope I summarized it. Okay, thank you, thank you, Sergeant. And now we do say they do easily deal with uh, uh, risks, and as we do know that they hold all the money they might give it easily now to all the users in Serbia because we know that money is really cheap on these days on the market. Even in Serbia, it's around 2 to 3%. And in Europe or everywhere else, it's maybe less than 2%. So uh, from the other side, we do know that investing in a real estate, for example, lands, 3.5 is like a capitalization rate. Or maybe investing in an apartment, it's around uh, income like 5% yearly, or maybe in a commercial office or any kind of commercial real estate is most likely 6 to 9%. So we do see there is a great, um, um, let me see, uh, it's a great place for investing because if we get money for 2 to 3% and we can make even uh, two times bigger than that, it might work very well for, for us. Of course, as we are all developers, uh, there is like first advice that can we we can tell everyone, and that is help, happening all the time in this period. Like everyone is investing investing these days because today, if you want buy an apartment and you rent it, and you know what is the uh, mortgage um, uh, fee that you are paying a uh, yearly and an income that you are getting from the rent, you can say that after 20 years you will get that an apartment for free. Actually. It will buy him by himself. Okay, and let me give you one number. For example, in 2018, it was sold uh, 37,500 apartments, actually uh, houses and apartments in, in Serbia. And there is an opinion that it's like one third of it is uh, done by credit. And let us see what is um, actually, what are some of the conflicts of interest that are currently present in valuation and how that works in Montenegro, actually. I will ask my um, colleague that is a high-skilled professional, and he used to be one and only RICS in uh, Montenegro for a long time, and he is a hard-working person for Montenegro. So we have heard how that all works, and what are the risks, and what are the conflicts over there, because we do see that something is happening over there. Earlier before we had the Russians over there, now we do have a really large project. So please, Mr. Milovan Ovakovic will help us out with that. Uh, thank you, Rosh. Hello. 
Hello, hello. Thank you, Rosh. Uh, I think that the key word is a challenge. So then we will pass risks and we will come to the conflict of interest, if you agree. Yes, please. Uh, because we are all dealing with different challenges in the region. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, some of them are similar, some of them are different. But generally talking, I think that uh, most of these challenges are similar in the region. Uh, challenges are definitely something which is good. They're driving the industry, they're driving us, and they're making changes. At the end, some new value is always born. Uh, from my personal perspective, uh, the biggest challenge in our industry is to save the integrity, personal integrity of the valuers and integrity of the industry in general. Uh, we received a lot of information and asked what, uh, today what is happening in the industry. Uh, we know that the banks are the main drivers of demand in our industry. Uh, we are, we as the valuers and as an industry are always between two parties and at the end in most of the cases one party is not totally satisfied. Uh, the industry is growing, the expertise is from year to year uh, on a higher level uh, every year. So on uh, one side we have also bank uh, officials who has a lot of experience. Uh, we've heard today that uh, some of them, uh, they used to work as appraisers, now they're working as, a, as a internal controllers. On other side, we have uh, new uh, industry changes in the, in the valuation industry. So we have licensed value, uh, uh, appraisers. In some of uh, countries like Serbia, this process is on a much higher level than in some other countries, like for example in Montenegro you have legislation, we still don't have legislation. Uh, in some of the countries we have legislation which is not uh, structured in a perfect way, uh, like we are receiving information from our colleagues from, from, from Croatia. Uh, so uh, the, the, the point of of my today's story, so we can come to this conflict of interest, is that we have to save our integrity. Uh, the biggest challenge is personal challenges to uh, continuously uh, be in line with the market, to listen the industry, to know in every moment where where we are standing, uh, to uh, be in line with the highest ethical and professional standards to try to be innovative, to try to be pioneers at the end. Uh, but this is not easy task. If we need to work for 100 euros some appraisal for some bank, and that's, that standard is set out by somebody, and you need to follow that in accordance with the with procedures and, and demand from uh, the banks who are driving practically industry, it's not easy. Uh, it's not easy not to come into the situation where you will have no conflict of interest. So uh, this is a big challenge. Uh, from uh, my personal perspective, we can deal with since I'm working in one in international company, big international company, where we have a lot of corporate clients. Uh, our main conflict zone is when we are providing to our clients different type of services. So if we are providing to some client agency work and our department in one phase needs to provide to the same client valuation. So this is the challenge that we are uh, dealing with and in uh, our concrete cases we are avoiding these conflicts. We are not uh, entering into this Chinese, Chinese wall procedure, we are just uh, rejecting to proceed uh, in accordance with the wishes of our clients or demand. Uh, from the conflict of interest perspective, uh, I think that the main 
and the key driver is the low price of the valuation and low demand on other side because we have uh, in Serbia, I've heard today, approximately almost 200 appraisers and approximately 300 potential uh, appraisers. In Montenegro we have, uh, I'm sure, very similar number, uh, around 200 in total, even more, approximately 30 licensed uh, appraisers. So all of them, they're expecting to work. Uh, but the quality of the work is, the, is very, very questionable. We don't have, for example, in Montenegro legislation on a pre, uh, related to this industry. We have a uh, law on accounting and we have some manual which is prescribing how this valuation process should be managed. So we then uh, don't have any sanctions. And as Mr. Verpeletti said today, uh, we didn't record any penalty against any, any valuer in, the, in our country as well. So we definitely have conflict of interest in the practice that are happening, but uh, I think that also the industry needs to be reg regulated much more in, 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 in a proper way, so uh, we would uh, have at the end higher level of integrity of the professionals, we will save the integrity of the industry, and we would have uh, less potential conf conflict of interest. So this is it. I do have one more question for you because we just heard that he that you are working for a great international company, and what is your opinion on the role of the valuer, for example? Who is going to do the valuation? Is it going to be like a great big players? Is that going to be like a great big players, like a great international companies or local companies that is going to take all the valuers and to do all the work for the valuation, or it might be good for one man show to work? in the future. What do you think? How that will work in, in the future? You're is talking going to be like a tailor-made valuation that is done by a big company or maybe any software or something like that, or we will still have a small companies and big companies. You're talking about the market in general or Montenegro in market? market in yeah. general. Uh, I'm sure that uh, market will keep the best in the industry. This is something that I'm 100% sure. Also, you, we have legislations in our countries which are stating that, for example, for in Montenegro, is every one year you need to value commercial properties. Every third year you need to value residential properties. So legislation is very important. So you must to do that. And you need to proceed with a full valuation. We are recording in uh, our market as well, but also in the region, that some new uh, massive uh, innovative uh, systems are coming and uh, some of them are uh, commercialized already on some of the markets. Uh, thinking about this mass automized valuations. So they will definitely increase the productivity of the process, they will facilitate the process as well from the perspective of the order of the valuation. Banks are mostly ordering this type of uh, valuations. Uh, on other uh, perspective, on other side, uh, I believe that this will have also direct uh, impact on the, on the number of uh, valuation for the local valuers who are on the list. So. Uh, who would be first, who grab first this job, he will be in a good position uh, to establish long-term cooperation with the banks mostly. And that can bring him in a position to be a dominant leader in this particular industry. And on the other side, I believe that uh, appraisals as appraisals and uh, they will continue to work what they are doing but I'm sure also that in the future market will eliminate uh, appraisers who are not proceeding with their work in a proper way. Thank you. Okay, let us now expand the role of the valuer profession like a property valuer. So we do know that 
working uh, as a one man show it's much harder than working in the team and for that expanding the our role um, i would like to mention for example what do i do uh, next to devaluation the there is in there is let us say uh, because we do have a great marking and we see that invest are all the time around us there is like a new product from the banks that is called like a project financing actually that is now again active so supervision and project financing is a re really great extended work and let me say uh, uh, upgraded to the profession for all of us followers still it's much much harder than doing the regular evaluation because you know that our job is to uh, covered by like like a multidisciplinary um, actions and you know that is like economic a legal part uh, uh, construction uh, geodesies and the one that i like the most is like investigation actually and inspection because we are like a policeman on the inside on site inspection and during the period of working evaluation we do actually find out a lot that will work us uh, during the work so i will encourage all the developers to improve their knowledge to to go on the seminars for example of the, for the project finance like it's much easier f maybe from two sides, because as we do know, there were court experts in economic and court experts in, in a construction, and one part is going to be easier for one side, and the other part is going to be, to be easier for the other side. But there are so many great courses. Either is that on our ICS uh, uh, web page, either is that our uh, NAVS web page, either is that the books or everywhere. So you can grab the knowledge everywhere around you. And maybe you should start, for example, with the basic of accounting that is like really important in that case and it's much 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 better paid than a regular valuation the second thing that i do i do the the investment advisory services because as we heard earlier real estates are the most important thing on the world and who knows better than us real estates Valors, they follow the market, they know all the prices, they know what's going on in the market, where we operate, actually. In the world, you heard there are professionals that deal only with the housing, they deal only with the commercial, logistic, industrial. Here, in, in our place, if we do know in the lack of the business and working opportunities that we are, let's say, doing everything, that will not work very well for us, because you know that uh, our mistakes can make really bad work for all the parties. So I encourage you to network each other and to talk with, to each other and to share knowledge between you. And that's what are we missing at this point because we need to talk to each other. What's going on on the market? What's happening to, to have those reports and to, to help each other? And this is like a great panel where we really deal the, with everything what is happening on these days. And the one thing that I was willing to mention to you is that uh, beneath of all of this, um, you see now we do have four great men here in front of you on the paper, actually. But uh, following the Rick's rules and ethics, we need to treat everyone with respect. So we are missing four women here next to us to, to be equal. But still, one great woman will help us out on one topic uh, that is uh, brand new and that will maybe be an advance to our profession. And please, Ms. Daniela Ilic, please help us out on the European business valuation. That is something that you and West were involved closely. And I would like uh, to hear what's going on. Is that something new that we are going to deal with? Well, thank you, Odesha. Yes, uh, well, uh, per perhaps you have um, uh, heard that um, just a few days ago at uh, Tegova General mm -hmm. Assembly in Sofia, um, uh, we have adopted um, uh, business European business valuation standards. And, um, well, uh, it is uh, not uh, completely new area for Tegova, uh, because uh, in 2000, I think, edition, 
2000 and 2003, there were some guidances about business valuation and intangible asset valuation, also machine and equipment valuation. So, well, it was just uh, because there was, was a pressure from considerable number of members, which also within their organizations have members in business valuation, in, uh, and uh, of course they wanted to um, have a um, professional framework on that side uh, for European level. So, well, yes, is there opportunity for real estate valuers to expand their um, scope? Uh, most probably, yes, because business valuer really in Europe doesn't have identification yet. So, is it accountancy background more um, adequate or is it some other background more adequate? Well, maybe the general perception is that the accountancy background is uh, more adequate. But uh, if you think about the skills that experienced real estate valuers possess, and that is uh, uh, that uh, uh, property valuers are very regulated and they are used to conduct their practice according to the uh, various standards. First of all, RICS is very uh, demanding uh, valuation standards and all the guidance notes that are there available to the valuer. Uh, so, compliance with the standards is something that we do on an everyday basis. Also, understanding basis of value, understanding uh, all the valuation theory and principles, understanding how basis of value is related to the purpose of valuation also. All the approaches and methodologies used and, uh, you know, uh, the analytical skill that uh, valuers possess, uh, real estate valuers possess, when researching the market, when selecting uh, market evidence and implementing that in certain valuation methodologies, you know, that is something that accounting uh, profession can't really be uh, very much, um, let's say, uh, proud of. So, as a basis, as a potential, yes, but uh, of course, real estate valuers need to get basic knowledge in accountancy for the beginning, the knowledge in financial analysis of financial statements, the knowledge in the, all the ba databases that are available for business valuers, and so on. So, potential is there, opportunity is there, but there is a lot to work on it, of course. And of course, it's not only education, it's also gaining experience, and it is the hard part of that. Thank so. you. So we just heard that we need to study a lot. If you want to be the good valuer, and if you want to do a good job, and to be known as a great valuer, you need to study, you need to gain knowledge, and you need to share knowledge. And earlier on the panel, we heard that one bank has a problem with the valuers. As we do have a banking professional next to us from the Erste Bank, I would like to ask him how do they deal with the, with the potential problems with the valuers because I am familiar they do have a great seminars and so on. So please, Sergeant, help us out on that one. Yeah, well, uh, as, as, as um, I forgot uh, the, uh, the gentleman's name, uh, the, the chairman of Tigova, it's, it's uh, something that it's simply uh, uh, going on in all over the world and it's not even just uh, in Serbia, so there is not a perfect situation, not a perfect market, um, and 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 I also believe that uh, uh, as, as as one of the panelists, uh, Milan said, for the integrity, uh, it can be uh, also uh, you know uh, depend uh, dependent be dependent on the on the amount of uh, fee that that is going to be paid to the bank, but I, I don't believe that uh, somebody would, uh, wouldn't be in more even challenge of, of, of uh, uh, bribery or whatever uh, if th those amounts are even higher. And um, so how, how to avoid all the risks, it's, it's uh, uh, f from the one uh, perspective, it's uh, by adopting a lot of technology that is going to exclude as much as possible 
the uh, subjectivity uh, uh, of the value one way, one way or, or another. Uh, it's, in my personal opinion, it's not going to uh, 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 exchange the, 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 the valuer position. The valuer will always be there to check the system, to approve the system, to, uh, to see if, if all goes uh, well. It's, it's also those systems are good as, a, as a checking points, especially uh, from the banking industry. Um, but as I said in the in the in the beginning, we we do realize a, a, a increase in quality of of uh, 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 valuers' work uh, after the the new law empowered in Serbia and after these all uh, continuing development programs and continuing uh, uh, expanding our knowledge and experiences and having these uh, discussions and panels. Uh, in particular, Erste Bank, uh, from where I'm com coming from, uh, we we try to uh, to organize as much as possible on a yearly uh, base uh, uh, discussions and open doors and and and, and, and uh, workshops for um, all parties involved, where we share our experiences, knowledge, where we uh, try to uh, over. Uh, oversee some difficulties in everyday everyday uh, work. Um, the 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 not not going into uh, uh, the the motives of uh, how some valuators did his or her job. Uh, many banks now have their representatives uh, uh, in terms of valuers, as I had uh, as I sp uh, said at the beginning, uh, as a real estate valuers who will check uh, every valuation and discuss with the evaluator if, if uh, some new arguments are uh, uh, arise and something else is, is, uh, 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 something else is uh, missing. I have to notice that um, the valuers uh, always have, have to keep in mind that uh, their valuations have been read by a lot of people not not just in bank, but uh, in in uh, all other uh, uh, processes that are involved in 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 uh, credit and, and whatever other uh, reason of the valuation is. So the valuation has to really be transparent, reasonable. It has to be. It has to make sense. Uh, it, it has to be. It has to drive the reader on the right direction, not not to to let him uh, or her uh, to to make another assumption. So. Uh, when we call a, a valuer, it's the te that case. We are missing some point, we are missing something. And uh, I'm glad that those cases are uh, really decreasing now. And I hope that uh, uh, in the future, uh, the role of uh, valuers in banks would slightly change from uh, monitoring uh, valuation reports to uh, also uh, find solutions with, with, the, with the industry on how to make some uh, automatizations, optimizations, and such. So, thank you, Professor. One more question. Okay, please. Um, as you lived uh, more than 20 years in Australia, and as you work for both sides, actually, like a professor, PhD on finance, and still you have a, a firm that is doing the valuations and investment advisory. What would be your advice for future valuers or just for the future? do we expect on the market or is there any line between Australia and, and Bosnia, Serbia? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I lost my good voice. Um, thank you for the question. Um, if, I, if I'm to summarize uh, advice, meaning it's, a, it's, it's not easy to give advices um, like this, but on top of my head, um, be careful, because things are intensely changing. With the increased uh, professionalization and regulation of the profession, uh, our liability is going to increase as well. Don't forget, we are living, uh, uh, as long as property prices are stable and increasing, and banks are not losing the money, they will leave us alone. Nevertheless, I'm quite sure, with, uh, with respect to the ne next crisis, if it happens, and it will happen in foreseeable, uh, foreseeable future. As a matter of fact, some colleagues, economists, are expecting in the next three to five years, they are saying there is a housing bubble, a bubble again, uh, happening in Europe and, and in the U.S. And we can expect a different market. 
as long as banks start losing money, we may expect uh, them to become our biggest regulators through the court litigation cases. You ask me about the Australia. The biggest regulator, regulator of our profession there in Australia are court litigations, courts. Why? As long as the investors or banks start losing money, they will sue us. And that's the major obstacle. The first thing that Valua thinks when, when Valua, he, she accepts the assignment. Remember my Aussie, Aussie, Aussie fellow mate, uh, when he was saying, don't accept the, the assignments that you're not comfortable with, that you don't have experience with. People don't do it there simply because they are afraid. They are keen to make money, as all of us. I know, I talked to, the, to Daniela uh, during the coffee break, he's saying, and we concluded it's easier for them because the market is much bigger. It is. Nevertheless, believe me, even if the market is much smaller, they will not dare to do that. Because as long as they make mistake and bank or investment, investor loses money, the first they will sue is the valuer. That still hasn't been the case in, in our region. But I am sure with the increased regulation, standardization and whatever, the basis for us to be sued is increasing exponentially. Please have that in mind. Environment will change sooner or later and we may get exposed. What's the, what's the, what's the solution? Solution is, as you said correctly, learn, learn, learn. Uh, try to be uh, as collegiate with your uh, colleagues. If you don't understand, if you don't in doing this particular assignment, share the assignment and always think about that you can be sued if you make a mistake. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question for Mr. Novakovic. Uh, please provide us with the info or your opinion. What do you think for a new colleagues or the colleagues that they do not have enough experience and the knowledge? What should they, should they do for, from the very beginning? Is it better for them to maybe work for great companies and for like one, two, three years and to get knowledge or maybe they should start by themselves? I also have, uh, before I answer you, this question, one, one message for the valuers, for Please. the appraisers. As Professor said, uh, I agree with all what he said, but we have to consider that we are working in, in this region. Uh, Valuers needs to uh, also consider diversification, not, not to focus only on this business, because this industry is not so popular at the moment, so this is also very important. Uh, related to your question, uh, for every young uh, future valuer, we are talking about the future valuers, uh, the most important thing is to try to find good mentor. That mentor could be found in some company or on some other way, but this is the crucial thing, to find a good mentor who will lead him through all process and in one moment he can or he will come to the conclusion, is he, uh, is he, uh, is he a person who will be a valuer or not because you need to involve passion and love into every industry if you want to be professional or one of the best in the industry so definitely mentorship is very important if that person would have been lucky to work also in some uh, big international company who would pro give him opportunity to pass through different assignments to get the right knowledge and get also the mentor into that company. Uh, that is a perfect match from my perspective. Thank you. And Surgeon, what is your opinion on this one? What is, would be your advice for, for today's valors and for the next generations that are going to come? Because we do know that on, in November we are going to have more than 100 people that will try to pass the exam and pretty soon as we heard, almost 300 are interesting in that. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with, with Milovan totally uh, 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 saying that uh, uh, integrity is a key, is a key uh, to the industry and to this uh, uh, practice. And 
uh, whether you or not are working for a big company or, or uh, uh, being as an individual, uh, you, you always have your name and, and, and surname. And uh, uh, the, the license and, and the, the, uh, you know, all the practice uh, 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 will only uh, help you to evolve and help you to uh, upgrade uh, your knowledge and what Milan said, your, 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 your sense of comfort in, in uh, evaluating uh, uh, the type of property that you are most comfort uh, with. Uh, embrace technology, keep learning, and, and uh, uh, don't be afraid to, to ask questions. Thank you. And this is a great opportunity for all the audience to get a free answer from these four guys that are investment consultants. Please, are there any questions for us? Yes. Hello. I'm Emir, and uh, for better expression, if you allow me, I will ask on Bosnian language. It's okay. Um, uh, today and danas i prethodni dana, mnogo smo razgovarali na temu ko procjeniteljima uh, treba da bude klient, to jest uh, ko treba da plaća uh, rad procjenitelja. Uh, ovo govorim sa aspekta, ja kao predstavnik i ajde kažemo bankarskog sektora pošto, ra pošto radim u banci, a isto tako i udruženja uh, procjenitelja. Uh, postavlja se uh, to pitanje uh, kod nas je u Bosni i Hercegovini aktuelno obzirom na, uh, na dolazeću regulaciju u pripremi koja uh, uh, insistira uh, da odnosno zabranjeno će biti uh, da uh, procjenitelje plaća dužnik odnosno uh, klijent banke uh, o, odnosno u tom slučaju znači banka bi morala direktno da plaća usluge procjenjivanja uh, kolaterala imovine. Uh, to ima svoje prednosti, uh, ali ima s druge strane i otežavajućih okolnosti sa stanovišta troškova banak, uh, banaka. Pa bih volio da čujem vaše mišljenje oko toga i perspektive u tom, u tom smjeru. That is the best question for a banker, yeah? Drago mi je da sam danas napokon čuo Bosna i Hercegovina. Ovaj um, šalu na stranu. Uh, nisam znao da se sprema takva, takva izmjena uh, zakona i negdje, negdje su procjenitelji koliko je meni poznato isto na, na tržištu Srbije uh, uvijek bili konforni nekako da, da je izbjegnu to plaćanje strane klijenta uh, što zbog uh, ovaj, brige oko neplaćanja i uh, uslovljavanja ovaj, uh, za svoj rad i za, za, za vrijeme koje je ovaj, i uložio što, što samim tim da se izbjegnu ne, bilo koje mogućnosti oko Ovaj, oko nekih, o, 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 da tako kažem, krivih radnji, kako god. A, sa druge strane, to jeste uvijek osjetljiva tema i za, na, na stranu ovaj, banaka. Ovdje u Srbiji, koliko je meni poznato, još uvijek a, nema takvih a, najava iz prostog razloga što a, je prosto na našem tržištu negdje ne, nepoznat način naplaćivanja te usluge ovaj klijentu da li kroz kredit da li u vidu o, o, down paymenta dakle ovaj isplate odma banka tad preuzima neki već posao sad nekoga ko naplaćuje i na koji način će ovaj da, da organizuje sada to poslovanje nekako je bankama uvijek sa druge strane bitno da, da je isključena iz tih procesa i da ima subjektivno treće lice koje će da odradi svoj posao, da naplati svoj posao onako kako je dogovorio direktno sa klijentom. Tu ima i rizika nekih, naravno, kako javnost, dakle kako ovaj klijent može da, da reaguje na, na tu ovaj, opciju u smislu da u slučaju da je klijent nezadovoljan ako stupi na snagu takav zakon u Bosni i Hercegovini, ovaj, može da ima predrasudu da je to zbog pritiska od banke. Dakle, sad ovaj, će biti vjerovatno ovo je drugačija, drugačija neka praksa. 
Tako da ono što za Srbiju još uvijek stanje kako jeste, banke u Srbiji se još uvijek ne miješaju u ugovorene obaveze klijenata i procenitelja. Mi smo tu onako samo da ispratimo taj proces i da se klonimo, da tako kažem, sa strane pozitivnih i negativnih strana, slažem se, ima kao što sam. Okay, for the and the closing words from from myself. So, don't you be worried about the valuation process? And no one is going to change us for on-site inspection. So we will have work to do, and there is no need to be worried at all because on these days we do know there is a, around one million mortgage uh, mortgages on the market. We do know there are like almost two million. Uh, real estates that are not uh, in the register, and maybe that might be a good advice for, for all the dwellers to hook up with the legislation persons and to do the legalization all of all of those real estates that are not in, in, written in the mar on the market because all of them will might be an investment opportunity and then might be in on the mortgage. So thank you very much on your patience and your time. And pretty soon we'll hear about deep diving into massive, massive data and on the market. How do we do it, actually? Thank you. Break.